$400 Rode Wireless Pro versus the $350 DJI Mic 2. Which one is the best wireless microphone system for you? In this video, we're going to talk about it because it's more than just the sound quality. That is an obvious feature and we will be doing this entire video filming with both of these microphones straight at a camera. I'm going to flip between the two so you can hear the audio quality and make up that uh, decision for yourselves. But you know, besides that, there's also form factor, there's other features that come with these wireless mics. So it's not a very clear cut answer. We're gonna dissect that in this video. And in my opinion, there is one clear winner over the other. So we're gonna talk about it. Before we get started, I do wanna say that I will film a majority of this video with the low cut filter off. A lot of the early tests that were done with the DJI Mic 2 had the low cut filter on and it did make a pretty big difference in the audio quality. I'll talk more about low cut filter later on in this video, but for now we will have it off unless I say otherwise. So in case you're not familiar with wireless microphone systems, the main advantage is that they are small and compact, relatively affordable in terms of pricing, and they allow you to attach the transmitter, which I have here, to your subject. And your subject can get pretty far away from the camera, up to 250 meters for the DJI and 260 meters for the road. And I can be pretty far away from the camera, I can even have my back turned to the camera, but you should still be able to hear my voice pretty clearly and pretty evenly. Now the transmitters for both of these mic systems do have built-in microphones, so you can just attach it to your subject and you're pretty much good to go. But you can also plug in a 3.5 millimeter wired lavalier microphone to both of these transmitters. And this is where Rode starts to shine, because the Rode Wireless Pro included in that kit are two wired lavalier microphones. They're both valued at about $100 each, and you know they're pretty high quality. Rode sells them on their own, and I've used them a lot in the past, and so it's really nice to have those included in the price if you want those wired lav mics. DJI does for the first time sell their own wired lav mic for 39 US dollars, but it is not included in the price. So you will have to buy that outside of the DJI Mic 2 kit if you want those wired lav mics. This is a sound test with the Rode Wireless Pro transmitter, the built-in microphone, and also the built-in microphone on the DJI Mic 2. So this is what it sounds like without the wired lavalier microphones, but we're going to go ahead and plug those in now and hear the differences. So now I've got the DJI lavalier plugged into the DJI Mic 2 transmitter and also the Rode Lav 2 plugged into the Rode Wireless Pro transmitter. So this is what it sounds like. Again, I do think it might be a slight downside that the DJI Lav Mic does not have a proper windscreen, whereas the Rode does. Also, the DJI lav mic does not come with a furry windscreen, which I do find to be a downside because if you're filming outdoors like I am right now, you definitely want to attach that windscreen just in case the wind comes by. It'll help block that wind noise out. By far the biggest advantage of the DJI Mic 2 over the original DJI Mic and the Rode Wireless Pro is the fact that you can now connect your microphone system to a camera via Bluetooth. So it can be done wirelessly, you don't have to physically connect the receiver to a camera. That's a pretty big game changer because it's less things you have to carry. And in my, to my knowledge, DJI Mic 2 is the only major wireless microphone system on the market aimed at consumers that offers Bluetooth connection. Now the only catch is that the Bluetooth connection is limited to DJI products and smartphones at the moment. Does not work with big mirrorless cameras, doesn't really work with point and shoots, and you know other action cameras or cameras that are not DJI, it's kind of dubious if it actually will work. In my experience it works with the DJI Osmo Action 4, DJI Pocket 3, it will connect to Insta360 products, but the sound quality does get a little degraded. Next up, this is an audio test of the Insta360 Ace Pro using the built-in microphones on the camera. So I've now got my AirPods connected. I do think that the menu in the Ace Pro needs to be updated because the way that you connect it is by connecting your AirPods. This is not an AirPod, this is the DJI Mic 2 transmitter and it does indeed connect. And of course, you do not have to use Bluetooth connection to use the DJI Mic 2. You can also plug it in to a camera like you would in a traditional wireless mic system. But for those cameras that do accept that Bluetooth connection, there is another advantage in that the Mic 2 transmitter can be used as a remote control. So you can start and stop recording, you can take a photo, and that's just a nice benefit because otherwise you'd have to typically buy a separate remote control to do that with a camera. But again, very limited, 
interested in the cameras that it does work with. But now let's talk about the overall form factor of both mic systems. I also have a plane going overhead, so a pretty good test to hear how good these microphones are at isolating my voice. Hopefully there's not too much noise. But anyway, in terms of form factor, the DJI Mic 2 is really nice because it is super small and compact, relative to Rode anyway. It's pretty much the same size as the original DJI Mic. There's a slight size difference. I think the Mic 2 is a little bit bigger, but they're still very small. But one pretty big difference that DJI did make to the Mic 2 is in the transmitter design. So it now has this glossy finish, and it's also transparent, so you can see inside of the transmitter which is really cool and you know it looks nice at first but the more that I've used this transmitter the more that I've really preferred the design of the original DJI mic it was just more subtle more professional looking and it was not glossy so both the DJI and Rode transmitters have this glossy finish now and it's just prone to picking up fingerprints it's prone to showing scratches more so I wish that the finishes weren't glossy. I also find that both transmitters do have the logos of both companies on them and they're pretty prominent. Uh, because DJI is a little bit smaller it's less noticeable but if you were to wear these transmitters and you're walking around and filming you're basically becoming a walking advertisement for those brands which I I'm not the biggest fan of. But uh, if you want to get around that, that's when you would want to use a wired lavalier microphone instead. Another design difference in the transmitter is that the DJI Mic 2 now has the indicator lights on the side of the unit rather than in front. So if I'm wearing it, it's less noticeable. You don't see those indicator lights uh, as much as you do on the road in the original DJI Mic. And so because of the position of the indicator lights, as well as the overall smaller form factor, I prefer the transmitter design of the DJI. Still not perfect, but I do like it a little bit more than I like the Rode. Next, we'll talk about charging case design and functionality and features, but we'll go indoors for that so you can hear what these microphones sound like when we're indoors. Now that we're indoors, hopefully you can hear the difference between the Rode and the DJI since we're recording directly to them. Let's talk about charging cases. So the Rode Wireless Pro is finally shipping with a charging case that can fit both of the transmitters as well as the one receiver. Now the lack of a charging case was a pretty big con on the previous Rode wireless microphone systems. So now it's an even playing field. The charging case is a zippered neoprene case as opposed to the hard shell case that comes with the DJI Mic 2. Now besides the Rode's charging case material being able to take more of a hit if it falls on a hard surface, it's also better than the DJI case because it can fit the transmitters with the windscreens attached, which isn't quite possible with the DJI case as it won't fully close with the windscreens attached. You also can't fit the 3.5 millimeter microphone jack connection cable in either the Rode or the DJI case. And you need this cable if you wanna attach either mic system to a mirrorless or DSLR camera. I admit that I can squeeze it into the Rode case, but it really is a squeeze and the zipper doesn't quite zip all the way. So it would still be ideal if both of these cases could fit everything you need inside of them without having to carry a separate bag. But the good thing about the DJI case is that it does come with the USB-C and lightning adapters, which you can easily add to the receiver to make a quick connection to a phone. This is something that's lacking in the Rode charging case. If you want to connect the Rode to a phone, you have to use a physical cable, and the cable won't fit in the charging case, so you have to carry everything in a separate pouch. Speaking of, the DJI Mic 2 also does come with a zippered protective pouch that stores not only the DJI Mic 2 charging case, but also the windscreens and the cables. So overall, neither one of these charging cases is perfect, and I still wish that we could fit the windscreens and the cables into the charging case, but I prefer the DJI Mic 2 setup just because overall it's more compact and pretty much everything does fit into a single bag rather than having two separate ones like you do for the Rode. However, one area that the Rode charging case somewhat excels in is the fact that if you connect the Rode charging case to a computer, then all of the units attach at once. This is super handy for doing multiple firmware updates, changing settings, or offloading media that is recorded directly to the transmitters. This way you can do it for multiple units all at once, rather than connecting individual units like you would have to do on the DJI Mic 2. But this is probably my biggest gripe with the Rode system. If I ever want to change the settings and I'm out in the field like this, I have to take off 
the transmitter and I have to have a cable with me and a phone or a computer and I have to connect it to that device and fire up the road connect app and you know this is two, this is 2024 I can't believe we still have to do this but yeah I have to connect it to this app and then now I can actually change some of these settings. So there are some settings you can change, you know, within the receiver and the transmitter without going to the app. But if you want to uh, turn on the gain assist, you want to uh, turn your LED lights on and off, you want to turn the high pass filter or low cut filter on and off, and you know, a bunch of other things, you have to do it on the app. And so this is a huge pain because with the DJI system, I can change all of the settings on the receiver. And if it's connected to a camera like the Pocket 3 or even the Osmo Action 4, I can actually go within that camera and change a lot of those settings. So big downside for the road. By the way, if you're curious, I'm filming this entire video on the DJI Pocket 3. We've got the DJI Mic 2 connected to it wirelessly via Bluetooth. And the Rode Wireless Pro, we're recording internally. So I'm going to sync the audio files in post-production. And so built-in internal recording is a big advantage for both of these mic systems. They both have it. But Rode has the biggest advantage in that it has the most internal storage space. So it has 32 gigabytes of built-in storage versus 8 gigabytes on the DJI. Now built-in internal recording is great for times like this when I might want to record my audio directly to the transmitter as a form of backup audio or just to use it as a voice recorder. But internal recording is also essential for a new feature that both mic systems have, it's been talked about a lot, and that is 32-bit float. So 32-bit float audio is recorded separately to each transmitter, so you have to connect the transmitter to a device and take off a 32-bit float audio recording. And if you are going to record a 32-bit float frequently, then it would be in your advantage to have more internal storage space. So that, again, is where the road starts to shine. Now let's talk about sound quality and a few special audio-related features that each mic system has, starting with the DJI Mic 2. So one new feature is noise cancellation. So right now we have it turned off, but I'm going to go ahead and turn it on here. So now we have noise cancellation activated. Uh, I'm standing in front of a pretty active construction site. So you're probably gonna be able to hear the audio difference between having noise cancellation turned on and turned off. So here we go, we're gonna go ahead and turn it off. So you can hear the difference with noise cancellation off. And again, this is noise cancellation now turned on. Do you hear a big difference? The only thing about noise cancellation is that you can actually add it in post-production. You don't need to have it in a mic system, but it might be really good to have in case you are in a particularly noisy environment. And you know that your audio is probably going to not sound very good, and you might want to turn that noise cancellation on. That's when it could be a good feature to have within the mic system. And it is something that the Rode Wireless Pro does lack. Now, even though the Rode does not have noise cancellation, that again is something you could add in post-production if you wanted to, but it does have a unique feature called Intelligent Gain Assist. And so right now I have it set to auto, and I'm gonna demonstrate what it sounds like if I bring the microphone transmitter really close to my mouth with Gain Assist on, this is what it sounds like. And next, we're gonna go ahead and turn it off so you can hear the difference. So now we have intelligent gain assist turned off. So if I were to bring the microphone really, really close to my mouth, like right under my mouth, you should never ever do this by the way. It's gonna give you pretty bad audio, but this is what it would sound like if I had gain assist turned off. Maybe also take off the furry windscreen <laughs> to demonstrate this better, but this is what it sounds like with intelligent gain assist turned off. So in pretty much every audio situation that I can think of, gain assist is great to have turned on. So whenever I'm using the road, I pretty much always have it set to auto. Now the last audio feature that I think is worth mentioning that both of these mic systems have is called low cut filter or high pass filter as it's called on the road. And so right now we have it turned off, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on for the DJI. So now low cut filter is turned on for the DJI Mic 2. This is what it sounds like. And so low cut filter is meant to remove low, low end frequencies on your audio, and it can help give more clarity to your audio, which sounds good in theory, but some microphones 
do it better than others. And so now we're going to switch over to the Rode and hear the difference with that filter turned on and turned off. And once again, I need to connect my microphone to my phone in order to control the high pass filter. So bear with me for a minute as I do that. Okay, so I've now turned the high pass filter or low cut filter on for the Rode Wireless Pro. This is what it sounds like. One thing that I do appreciate about the Rode is that it gives you two different levels of high pass filter to add. So we're at, we're at 75 right now, but you can bump it up to 100. And so it's nice to be able to control the strength of the filter and perhaps that's why the DJI sounds maybe stronger than it should but this is what it sounds like with the Rode high pass filter on so that's a demonstration of low cut or high pass filter I do find that it impacts the DJI audio more negatively than it does for the Rode I think it actually sounds pretty good for the Rode so I would use high pass filter in certain situations on the Rode but I personally would not use it on the DJI so by now you've heard audio quality comparisons between the DJI Mic 2 and the Rode Wireless Pro. Uh, to really hear the audio differences, you're going to want to use either really high quality speakers or headphones. Otherwise, you may not hear much of a difference. But uh, after all my testing, I think you guys will all agree with me that the Rode does sound better. The sound is just warmer, more full. I don't really know how to describe sound, honestly, but I just I like the sound that comes out of Rode compared to DJI. That does not mean that DJI has bad sound. It's still very good. But if you compare it to Rode, I think Rode just edges it out quite a bit. So those are all of the major comparison points between these two mic systems. But there are what I would consider some minor ones, too. First is the maximum operating range. It's 250 meters on the DJI versus 260 meters on the Rode. Also battery life, which is six hours per unit on the DJI Mic 2 and seven hours on the road. In both cases, road does come out on top, but not dramatically. So as you've seen and heard, there is more to these microphone systems than audio quality. There are other features like size, form factor, and usability that are all very important too. So honestly, I think that Rode does have better sound quality over DJI. Plus, I love the inclusion of high quality wired lavalier microphones, albeit at a slightly higher price point, and also the large amount of built-in storage in the transmitters. But if you guys have been following my channel for a while, then you know that I value the smallest form factor and ease of use above anything else. So, because it is smaller, and I can control all of the settings from the receiver without connecting it to a phone or a computer, I'm willing to sacrifice a little bit of audio quality and opt for the DJI Mic 2 instead of the Rode Wireless Pro in most situations. But I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below. Which of these two mic systems do you think sounded the best? Which one has the best overall features? And which one ultimately would you pick? Let me know in the comments. And stay tuned for my upcoming video. I'll be doing a budget wireless microphone comparison. All of these microphones that I'm gonna talk about are under $200. So very interesting. I don't actually know how it's gonna turn out yet because I haven't filmed it, but I will leave a link in the description below when that video is ready. And we will do some brief comparisons to the DJI and the Rode mic as well in that video. So stay tuned for it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.